Millions of people visit our beautiful city of Prague and many of them have their video cameras with them and they film and say something about our town that sometimes is very inaccurate. Trying pizza in Prague for the first time. That's right, they fry the pizza dough inside of this so much oil. I've, I realized that they don't slice their pizza and yummy and soft. This is just so wrong, you have no idea. This video has thousands of comments from Czech people saying that's not pizza, that's langos. That's like two completely separate things. It's like, oh, they got the Eiffel Tower in Paris? It looks just like the Statue of Liberty. Just because it's tall, it's not the same thing. Just because it's round, it's not the same thing. So today we're gonna go after these inaccuracies that I found on some travel vloggers videos on YouTube. Now, in any way, this is not meant as a hate or as roast. Uh, the videos and the people who made them are great. There's just sometimes a little um, inaccuracy in the information they're giving. Thank you. To begin with, we go to a channel called Anton, to this uh, guy who is one of the happiest travelers I've seen in my life. This guy does a great video, he shows that he went for some goulash in Kavarna Slavia, they walk around a lot with his wife, and then he comes to the Charles Bridge. And that's where the fun begins for me. <laughs> this bridge dates back to 1357, it's a guy got loads of history with it, they chucked Charles off here because he didn't agree with some religious stuff that was going on at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't throw Charles IV uh, off the Charles Bridge. He is one of the most famous um, personas of our history. And no, we did not kill him. Let's move on. <laughs> um, threw him in the river and that was the end of that. No, we did not throw him in the river. Although I know where this information is coming from, but let's, I'll let you finish. But they named the bridge after him. <laughs> And there he is, there's Charles. <laughs> All right, so thanks to that shot, I know where you got the idea from. The picture you just showed is not Charles, but it's the same John of Nepomuk. And yes, he was tortured and murdered and eventually thrown off the bridge. So what you did here is you mixed up two stories and you put them together. Uh, unfortunately, you did it with Charles IV. So for us, uh, that is very, very funny and, and hilarious. Now, Anton continues and shows some actually very cool stuff to show, the um, lookout tower, he takes the finicular, and then he goes to the John Lennon wall, and he's not inaccurate there. He's more than accurate, and I agree with him, even though most tourists wouldn't, and that is, he doesn't get the point of the Lennon wall. But everybody just scrubs on it now, they just draw over what was originally there, I don't quite get it. I can't agree with you more, man. Now at this point, he recommends something that I hate more than diarrhea, and those are these green lime scooters. I hate them so much, you have no idea, but when I see the smile on this man's face when he rides these around our city, I, I just understand it. It makes him so happy. <laughs> it ain't very big. I said that with the Empire State Building. This is very similar. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't really big, I said that with the Empire State Building, and this is similar. <laughs> I don't really know where you're going with that idea, but it made you and me laugh, so I think we're good. I love how in the next segment, uh, you say you're going to the Dancing House, which is a beautiful building uh, on the riverside, but when you get to it, you only talk about your lime scooters and how much fun they are. I loaded the app, we've got our little lime scooters. These are brilliant. So that's very interesting for me, very new perspective. Uh, which is kind of uh, understandable. And uh, you also go to locations that are further from the city, so I understand you use these scooters. I just don't want to see the bill, though. These little suckers cost, man. They cost. By the way, I'd just like to remind all the viewers that if you ride these Lime scooters around Prague, you cannot ride them on the sidewalks. The police will find you. Now, the gentleman enjoys some uh, luxury time in the beer spa, I would say. I have nothing to say about that because I've actually never been, but I know it's popular. And then he heads out to... In the middle of the bridge, you've got the island, Beaver Island. <laughs> Beaver Island, beavers everywhere. That is called the Shooter's Island, Strzelecki Ostrov, not Beaver Island. But it's funny, uh, and it's not the first time I'm hearing it, how many tourists uh, nicknamed it or even renamed it to Beaver Island. Because, believe it or not, there's not a single beaver on it. The animals that the tourists think are beavers are actually nutritious. 
What a cracking place this is. <laughs> to je skvělý. Je to týpka žeru. <laughs> He then visits two uh, Italian pizza places that neither of those I've ever visited, but they both look amazing, so I'll make sure to try them out. And then he goes to a place that he refers to as traditional strapizzi. What do you think that is, Honza? It's in the heart of Prague, it's traditional, and it's strapizzi. We need some traditional strapizzi. Now it took me some time to figure out why is he calling this uh, sweet pastry for tourists strapizzi. And the reason is that the place where he bought it actually has a sign that says Tradiční staropražské. And staropražské, which someone may pronounce as strapizzi, uh, actually means old Prague, staropražské, which it's not, just so you know. <laughs> By the way, fun fact, uh, there's not a single tourist video about Prague that would be without Trdelník. All of them have it in, so it is traditional by now. It's cold. Our maid then moves to a restaurant called Upavoka. I've walked around many, many times. I've never been inside. Uh, he did some nice shots. Uh, I guess it's a cool tourist event. But we're gonna move on to the next vloggers who came to Prague. And the theme of their video was to be on a budget. So let's see how successful they were. We're gonna track it all, but first, beaver. We're really sorry to interrupt your favorite TV show, The Honest Guide, but we do have a developing story, breaking news from right here, the Beavers Island. Apparently not only beavers, but also sharks are surfing all around the island. And they are Surfshark VPNs, the partner of today's video, and they have an offer for you. If you want to use Surfshark VPN, you can do so by using the link below our video or using the code HONESTGUIDE. It will give you three months for free, 83% off, and then you can use the Surfshark VPN. What's it good for, you ask? Well, it's easy answer. Imagine there's a website about beavers and it's geo-restricted to a specific country. Then you can use Surfshark VPN to access that website and learn and find out more about beavers. That may not be the case, but imagine your favorite movie or a TV show or a website with weather. That actually happened to me just recently. Uh, thanks Surfshark for sponsoring our show. And now let's go back to the favorite show to learn more about beavers on the beaver island. But first, beavers. <laughs> but first, beavers. This is Michelle's and Alex's channel uh, that is great. They have some great videos. And they're starting off in Prague on the Beaver Island, proving that nutrias are really super popular among tourists. This is free. Free beavers. <laughs> yep, she's right about that. The evil mayor of Prague sitting in his dungeon. Should I start charging tourists to look at the beavers? <laughs> One of the first places they recommend in their videos is Smetanyak, Smetanyak Q coffee place. Uh, that is amazing. Me and Honza love to go there. Definitely, though, not on the budget side. Uh, but once again, a great spot. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if there's a girl in the travel videos, sometimes there's a slow motion shot of her. But hey, a slow motion shot of the Nutria Beaver? I approve of that. Straight from that breakfast place, there's a bridge called the Legion Bridge, which is a great place to get a view of, the, I think, the, the, camera, the castle bridge. If that's not right, I'll put it up on the screen. The, the, bri the famous bridge that's across from Prague Castle. <laughs> we see Alex for the first time struggling to come up with the name of the Charles Bridge that we now know is named after the guy that we killed and threw off the bridge. Uh, but hey, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you can just call it the bridge. We will know which one you're talking about. But he got the right name of the bridge on the screen. Castle Bridge, it does make sense. It's the bridge we cross to go to the castle. By the way, Alex, you impressed me, dude. You don't know the name of the Charles Bridge, yet you know the Bridge of the Legions, the Legion Bridge behind you? Not too many locals even know the name of that bridge. And there are tons and tons of beavers that if you bring vegetables, you can feed. I like how he calls them beavers, which they're not, which he corrected himself in the title, they're actually muskrats, which they're not, they're actually nutrias. And maybe, just maybe, I'm wrong because I'm not a biologist or expert in these, you know, big rats that crawl around. So if you are, let us know what they're called in English. We think they're nutrias. You know what they call them at the city hall now? Money-making Money machine. machine. <laughs> <laughs> Lawsuit coming up. Don't know. He almost threw her off the bridge, just like they did to Charles IV. <laughs> Alexei, leave Michelle alone. 
Alex and Michelle now climb up to the castle. They drop some fun facts about the castle and one inaccurate information. And that is that the line to the castle is there because the entrance is free. Yeah, so the reason why the line is so long is because getting into the castle is actually free. Nope, uh, the entrance was always free to the uh, complex of the castle. But just a couple years ago, there was no line. The reason for the line are security checks that were recently installed in. So people have to show their pockets and their backpacks. Uh, that's why there is a line. If you go in the afternoon, there will be no line. And also, if you stick around a bit, we actually just changed our president and he promised to put the security checks away. That's pretty. Also, there's a cool Starbucks over there. There is a cool Starbucks over there. Uh, she's absolutely right. Uh, there is a great Starbucks uh, on the square which has an amazing view. So if you're used to this Starbucks, this is the Starbucks we have in Prague. It's like, I came to see this very old castle, but I'm gonna mention the Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, and what would be a tourist video without a turdelli? Oh, she's about to have the Strapitsky. We did it, we got the thing. Also, if the goal of your video is to stay on a budget, maybe I'd uh, skip the Trdelnik and go for some other pastry that may be uh, cheaper. But there's something else. So I think there's like a little bit of like, not controversy, but what's the right word? If this is just like a touristy dessert or if locals actually ever eat this. A little bit of controversy? We call it a war. We hate that thing. If you know, let us know in the comments. I'll let you know. I'm making an entire video where I'm letting you know. I've been doing this for six years now. It's a crusade I've been on with my buddy Honza. <laughs> Prague is like a super walkable city, but there is a really extensive network of trams, and I think they have a subway. Very accurate information here from Alex. Prague is more than walkable. We do have great uh, tram system, and yes, we do have subway, which I understand that if you're a tourist only moving in the central area, you're probably not gonna use it, but it's cool. Next time visit it as well. It's about 30 karuna for 30 minutes or 120 for karuna for the whole day. So it's also very affordable. Not bad. But walking's cheaper. If they would cut out the Trdelnik from this video, they'd be great honest guys to Prague. Free walking. It's pretty. Not only it's pretty, but there is a Starbucks right across from it that has a great view of the clock. Actually has a ton of free museums that we didn't take advantage of on this trip so that may be something you want to check out once again very accurate information about many museums being free up until the point where Alex says this and the communism museum's free yeah no the Museum of Communism is not free it's actually more than 10 15 euros but maybe you're referring to some experience you had on the streets of Prague that reminded you of communism. In that case, I would be wrong and you'd be right. That is possible. <laughs> they follow their tour uh, to a restaurant called Krčma, which uh, happens to have some traditional food. And I love how she orders the fried cheese. Fried cheese with, I think they're boiled potatoes. Now I'm completely unsure of what kind of fried cheese or what kind of cheese this actually is. So let's get into it. You're not in Switzerland. This is the Czech Republic. Uh, we usually put the cheapest item uh, and we fry it. Uh, so that's uh, a laughable moment for a Czech audience or for Czech viewers like us. This goes on it, you think? Yeah, horseradish right. sauce. And also when you think that you have a horseradish uh, as the sauce next to it. No, that's a tartar sauce. Uh, we basically put it on anything. Tatarka, oh boy, I just love it. Traditional check. Traditional, yeah, yeah. I've been looking for this all day. For dessert, they're getting uh, medovnik and uh, they called it traditional. We wondered about it with Honza, did some a little Google searching and it may not be traditional, just like the trdelnik. So uh, it's just, I'm being rude. I'm taking the fun out of fun. That's all for now. We're gonna be in Bratislava tomorrow. All in all, I think these guys were great and it seems to me they had a great time in Prague, which is the most important uh, thing. I love watching these videos because not only I learn something from them that I didn't know about my city, but I also see how travelers view our city and the things uh, that surround us here because our point of view is completely different. None of the information that was in the video was uh, in any way harmful, but sometimes, as I said, they can be laughable for us. So I hope when you'll come to Prague, you'll also make a video. You'll post it on YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram so we can review if the information in it was inaccurate or accurate. That being said, we make mistakes in our videos almost daily. 
we get corrected a lot in the comments. So doing mistakes, making mistakes, being inaccurate is absolutely normal. That's why we have the comment section below. So go to the comment section, let us know which of the things mentioned you also tried on your trip to Prague or which of those things you will try on your trip to Prague. Uh, if I want to see you in Prague, I'll see you here on the channel that is called The Honest Guide next Sunday at 6 p.m. Central European time. And at the end, I always teach you a Czech word. This time it will be uh, how to say inaccurate. It is nepřesný. Nepřesný is inaccurate. And by the way, if you're curious where we are, we're not at my house. Uh, we're just off the Beaver Island. <laughs> we're uh, in the place called the Rybarna Scoutsky Institute that we've mentioned. So the Boy Scouts were kind enough to let us lend us this studio uh, so we could film this episode overlooking the Beaver Island.